Yep. Okay. All right. So so we're good. All right. Perfect. Okay. So, ah, all right. Welcome everyone. Welcome everyone to Indie Three 2014 Day Two. This is our first panel today. My name is Lenny Stewart, by the way, if you don't know. Um, this is our first panel um, on creating 3D art. And with me is XRA, Dick Chungali, and Alice Effect. Um, all these people have done art as well as some 3D art as well. So I'm interested in the conversation that can, can come out of this. Um, I'm not going to be speaking for this panel. I'm basically just let, let everyone talk. I'm just going to be around. Um, I'm going to be around the chat as well. If you have questions in the chat, we can talk. Hopefully, um, I'm assuming that, that all of you will be able to maybe engage with the chat as well. But if not, we can at least have maybe some questions at the end. Um, this is going to be an hour chat. So this is probably going to end around 5 EST which is 2 PST, if I'm correct. And yeah, that's that's basically it. Um, so, I mean, if there's any kind of topic that, that you all want to go through first, I mean, you can go through it. If not, I can. I have my own ideas. But is there anything you guys want to talk about first? Yeah, Andrew likes, Andrew likes to talk about X-Ray's microphone rubbing on his... <laughs> first, great. first point of order. Yeah, yeah X-Ray, like, sorry, sorry, if, you, if you can switch the push to talk, that would be really helpful, I think, for you. All right, hang yeah. on. Again. Yeah, see so if, if you can switch to, to push the talk, oh, that'd be good. so much better. <laughs> well, he's muted himself now, so... Yeah. Uh, Alright, so, well, Nick, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, sure. Uh, I'm Nick Chingali. I do... I live in Dallas at the moment, or, well, just not in Dallas, but whatever. Okay, and I yeah. do 3D art for games and for engineering companies sometimes, and for a variety of weird different things every once in a while. Uh, and ever, and sometimes I do some game design and coding and whatever stuff, but yeah. All right, I'm not sure if yeah. XRA can hear us, but uh, I'm not sure if... Is it right, do you wanna... Can you hear me? All right, go. Yes. Yes. All right, cool. Uh, oh, introduction? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so I've, yeah, I'm XRA, and I guess I've been in the game industry for a while, um, about 10 years now. Oh. Um, but I'm traditionally a level designer, and but I've you know over the over the years kind of branched out to just doing different things, and a lot more interested in doing my own stuff now with like independent games and everything that comes with that. And uh, I guess Alice Effect, uh, can can you introduce us for a little? Yeah, uh, I guess I'm a musician, sort of an artist and programmer. I've been making a small uh, iPhone games and uh, working with uh, Renault and uh, a bunch of cool people on jam games at like Tojan and things like that. I've been living in Japan for a while and I just came back. Okay. So I'm kind of rediscovering uh, Montreal. Oh, Montreal? Okay, well I live here too, so so I'm around. I'm... Yeah, I know. That, that, yeah. Oh, I, I saw you mentioned, oh, I, saw, I saw you asked me about before. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so I'm, I'm in Montreal. I mean, I'm, I'm out in the, the suburbs, but I'm still in Montreal, I guess. So uh, I'm, I'm around here. Um, so yeah, um, so I mean that's, that's basically it. So if, if any of you want to start with any topic that you're interested in, um, particularly because I know you guys, you guys talked about it a little bit before, then then you can start on whatever you like. Um, if not, then I have my own opinions and ideas. But but if you have anything particularly you want to start with, I, I mean we should really talk about the E3. I okay, mean, yeah, okay. And then get that that out of the way. <laughs> we can talk about E3 or Indie 3 Which one? Uh, well, I mean E3, and then we can move on to Indie 3 Okay, okay. So like. But what what particularly about E3? Well, I'm curious to see what you guys think because I was complaining on on my own a little bit. Well, I mean, I was looking at what people were saying a little bit, but uh, for the past two days, I felt like completely grossed out about what I was seeing. Today was not so so bad, but I feel always kind of guilty about liking Nintendo because they're so conservative. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I only caught. I didn't catch it in Nintendo stuff today, so I can't speak to what they showed. I only heard like secondhand comments and things and, on Twitter. Yeah, I didn't see the didn't catch the Nintendo stuff today. Well, it was it, it was in comparison, I I felt it was pretty good because I I mean for two days in a row seeing like a third person like crazy violent third person, I, I felt like it was like. Refreshing to see some colors and, and things, but it's also mostly sequels. So I don't know if I'm. So so I, I also mean, Wii U. Oh, I just want to ask, like, so so are, are any of you like ever impressed when you watch E3 in terms of the art that's there when you watch like some of those conferences there? Like at, at least at least any of you get the chance to watch any of like the stuff, at least like some of the preview stuff. Like, are you ever like impressed with the kind of art that's around there? Because it's pretty intricate when you think about the budget that goes into it. 
Yeah, I um, I did catch yesterday stuff, and I'm not like it is. It is impressive that when you have like you know super great like skin pores and whatever on real in real time. But I'm never as I think as impressed as other people seem to be. Like it, it's I'm much more interested in how uh, is it called Ori? I think it has with stuff that has more unique something like a style I've never seen before instead of just like a lot of people get really excited for graphical like technical prowess which is like not to say that it was easy but <clears throat> and say like it doesn't not, I don't get excited for that sort of stuff very so, uh, very much so 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 you you could say that you could say that, that there's one particular direction in 3 art that seems to be going which is that everything gets more detailed the more detailed but this understanding of like of like an actual like artistic slant is something that's probably more impressive would you say yeah yeah that's probably that's a good way to put it okay um when like it doesn't mean that stuff that is not technically impressive isn't also itself difficult to do like in journey you know they have a lot of like sand tech or whatever that makes when you're walking around you know like have little footsteps and that sort of thing but it uh and that wasn't like easy to do but i feel it was unique enough that i you know i was impressed by it as opposed to whatever you know man shooter wants to do i suppose mm -hmm. man shooter Man shooter. It's just a general term. It's, 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 it's just it's just kind of like a <laughs> yeah. It's just kind of like a like a sort of slang term for for like a very particular style. Okay. Yeah. Well, like, is it is it like a Far Cry style? Um, well, I mean, it's it's basically like a lot of first person shooters, a lot of like big budget first person shooters. Usually, is like the term for it. it's like oh, a man. Okay. It's like a man shoot because because they starve usually men, usually white men. For the most part, <laughs> and, and yeah, usually, usually man, oh, usually okay. man, and okay, man shooter, man shooter, yeah, that's what I meant. Okay, yeah, I with a like the AAA art stuff, like I I like it. Um, I like it because we can kind of watch what they're doing and be you know see what the, where where they're going with as far as technology and stuff. And then the interesting thing for us is just thinking about how how we can use that in different ways, learn from it. So it's, I always try to watch E3, but it's, you know, the past couple of years, it's, I'm realizing it's like the same thing each year almost with a few nice surprises mixed in between. Yeah, uh, it's definitely good to keep an eye on what everyone is doing, but okay, I so, suppose it's not. Okay, okay, so, so I, I mean, like, this is the thing. I think this is the thing for a lot of people, actually, because you watch E3 and you realize that it is sort of like the same thing around, right? And it's, and it's weird, too, because you think about it and you realize the same thing with art. I mean, I mean I'm trying to think now. There's a really, really good tweet by Robert Yang um, a little while ago, um, and he was talking about how there's this program that every every studio uses a, to, to make a game look expensive, quote-unquote. Um, and there's actually a really good post okay. that he made once about, about how a lot of 3D art um, in particular, with AAA games, is is particularly about making something look expensive. So it feels like a bunch of so hot around. So what I'm interested in is is the kind of I'm really interested in the kind of work that that all you three do, particularly, and and how and and what what, what do you think the kind of stuff that you do or the stuff you're interested in would differ from the kinds of things that you would see at something like E3? Um, I could I could start. If yeah, that's fine. Well, that's good. I, I can hear myself in someone's. Uh, I think it's speakers. a lot of your echoing, actually. Oh, I'm echoing. Okay, so 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 I'll, I'll, I'll okay, so I'll mute, I'll mute myself while you'll talk. I'll, I'll mute myself and then I'll come back, but I'll mute. Uh, it. All right. Um. Well, I'm I'm always trying to, to be as far as possible from Unreal from Unreal looking <laughs> games. Um. But I, I I mean I know a lot of people kind of thrive for that because it I mean lens flare I mean fucking lens flares. Oh yeah. <laughs> um. That's really but, funny, uh, by the way. I, I just wanted to know that. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, but I think I'm always trying to go for a 2D style. I think for for me 2D, so since I mostly do mobile stuff, I think 2D is much more. It's well, it's easier easier to understand and it's it reads better than like a shitload of foliage and uh, you know rock tiles and stuff and and stuff. So I've always kind of try to work my way away from uh, this like hyper realistic or hyper details thing. I think I think like. Simple things work better usually for uh, handheld devices. Um, I mean, like, like, I, I, I think when big studios start to make like really minimalist and simple things, then it starts to look really interesting. Like, I'm not sure how big uh, the little like uh, the Sideboy uh, company is, but 
they managed to make something that is quite easy to read and looks kind of decent on on really st strong hardware and with really good engines. It might it might it might be unreal. I don't know how, what they use, but um, I think there are companies like that and Journey also are pretty good at like pulling away from uh, the usual Far Cry look and and Uncharted. Mm. Yeah, uh, I definitely I like one of the styles I guess that I really really like is that very low poly uh flat shaded solid color look that journey kind of did not specifically that and i can't uh think of a game that uses it off the top of my head but that sort of stuff where it's all basically triangles that are very specifically placed and there isn't you know a single character could be you know like 90 triangles or something really ridiculously low but it has it's a very that, that minimalist look i really really enjoy yeah, me too. Like, um, so, like uh, the new, the new game. I think it's it's Abzu is the same studio who made Journey, right? Uh, oh, I don't know about that. Uh, I think. Uh, well, I think it, it felt kind of a very similar uh, atmosphere and very kind of like contemplative game. Uh, I'm curious to see how we're going to bring that. I, I, I was like, I really liked Limbo, and I think it was a good, cool, cool thing. I think I'm even more excited about what they're doing now. I think it's something that it's like super simple, super minimal. I want, I want, I really like games like this. I wish there was, I wish there was more. Like right now, it's it's really hard to fall on either like Unreal or like pixel art. And I think some people right now are like finding new, I, I guess, visual scenes. You know, to put themselves into. It's like oh, it's it's not not lo-fi. Not it's it's kind of like it just feels uh, well weighted, not too like busy. Yeah, that's one thing I think uh, that advanced, like, you know, the hyper-realistic 3D stuff, like the AAA 3D gets, well, that's what kind of bothers me about it, is that it gets really, really busy, and... Well, oh. like, one game I really like that kind of changed in a way that I don't like it so much is Killzone. The first Killzone I played it so much, and now it's just about, like, it's so hard, like, it I tried the second one, the third one. It's imp I, I don't I have no, I can't tell what's going on. It's just like smoke everywhere and lens flares, and it's like so much effects. It's it's, it's so far from immersion when you can't feel anything, where everything is just like a fuck. It's just like a pizza of of effects one on top of one another. Uh, the second one had a really minimalist look, and I I kind of missed that. I mean, um, and yeah, some games now are like kind of pulling. Away themselves away from that. Like t t today, and like Nintendo is for me, it's kind of like uh, love and hate relationship. Like I think they have they have some good, good simple ideas, new interesting gameplays. The, the paintball thing for me was very exciting, but they have such a bad. I, I mean, the the art is so terrible for me. It's, it's like, <laughs> uh, very not inspired. I find. I mean, the gameplay feels. It looks like it feels really good, but it could not have been more generic in the way that they're presenting that gameplay. So, so, so I just think like, oh, go ahead. Oh, I, well, I, I just, I just, I just want to go quickly. Is is that what, what I think is interesting about this? The, the, I, I like that you mentioned Killzone, right? Because there's a, there's a sort of idea in games. Um, I hope I'm being said okay, but but there's this idea in games about um, a sort of progressive understanding that as we go on through the years, things look better, quote unquote. Things run better, quote unquote. Games bet better, storytelling gets better, quote unquote. But it's not like a line that just goes up, right? I watched like a video of kills on once, and you can sit there and say, "Oh, it's really ugly," right? If you're thinking of it in a particular sense of. The, is the detail there because you can because if you're thinking of it in one particular way you say kills and looks amazing because look at all the effects and stuff right um but but you would realize that that's somewhat simplistic right when you think of of, of what is what is what is being used what are the elements being used that are effective and what isn't you realize that that you are there are games that are incredibly old that that have incredible um quote some people call them art styles but like to say like incredible sort of visual direction um that that might be better than the kind of stuff you would see at something like a like a large conferences um, you know, a lot of sort of current retail games and such like that. Um, um, when it comes to um, when it comes to to minimalism, I'm interested in, in that particular because because you, you're right that this is weird sort of binary, right? Um, between what is 3D because you're either doing incredibly real things or you're doing kind of pixel things, and and it's hard to sort of find an in between, particularly in that. Um, I'm interested in, in 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 this particular idea about about minimalism as well, right? Which which is this thing of of well, what is well, it seems 
because there are a lot of sort of minimal sort of 2D games that you could find, but it's hard it's hard to find sort of games that you would think in 3D with 3D art that's also particularly you would think as minimalist and such. So it's like a weird thing. Well, I, 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 a bunch of people on on a, on a on the chat want Nick to say something. So I think Nick, you should tell your opinion on on minimalism in 3D games. <laughs> yeah, I noticed a uh, wave of my name. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, there, there are definitely. Like, I'm, I think uh, I don't. I, I'm for some reason Hyperlight Drifter. I don't think that is 3D. I'm not. I've only seen screenshots of it, but that kind of has that angular minimalism that I like to see, and, and as opposed to like it. You were saying you were saying like older games have that art direction that is you know like not as technically well done as what is around now but i think that they succeed because they work really well together and it creates that atmosphere that feels really good despite not having amazing you know effects and things like that and i think the reason we're seeing that a lot of that now is because we just couldn't do that for a long time uh because of computers and now we can well we might as well put in dust and lens flares and volumetric fog and whatever whatever and not necessarily make it look great. Have you played a dry? Dry? No. It's like an iPhone game. Oh. Uh, well, iOS it has a super clean. I think it's 3D. It looks 3D. Uh, it's super clean 3D style. Or like somebody on Twitter just mentioned, like Kentucky Route Zero, which I find also has beautiful. Yes. Just like yeah. I love that game. <laughs> Yeah, Kentucky Route Zero is definitely that 3D minimalist style that is, I think, I think is super, super cool. I think, well, I think a lot of kind of, it's, I mean, it's probably been said before, but the, the older games that try to do more of the realistic detail, like if they can't, if they can't get it right, it doesn't really live up uh, or like last in the long term. Um, but then when you look back on a lot of the older games that, didn't really go for that, and they are more minimal or abstract with their geometry. It, it holds up because um, you can find a way to make that stuff look good and work together. And so that's that's what I think is really interesting about, about games like Kentucky Route Zero and Dre and any other games that kind of have that really minimal 3D art style. It's like they they make it their own and do something interesting with it. I'm wondering if, if it's a question of like, I don't know, age or not age, but like like that. I think change, things changes, or I feel like uh, it's getting. I don't like me myself. I, I a long time ago I think I would have preferred like more busy scenes, but more and more I feel more uh, hasty about the way I want to discover games, and I want to see. I want it, I want it to be more accessible and easier to read. Um, not sure if you get that as well. Uh, but one game I've I've been like really hooked to is the I think it's called Super Hot. It's like the shooter yeah. where, where when you move like that game is so simple and it's it has like a super hot yeah it has a, like a very straightforward mess like gameplay you don't need text to explain and it's like you 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 learn how it's done by actually playing with it. It's not like tutorial boxes and and like oh you need to do this and that and straightforward. I think uh, like I would like to see a this as being like the, uh, you know, not a standard, but something that people could try, thrive to. I, I think the part of the readability is that it's the uncanny valley effect where the closer you try to get to what is, you know, perfect reality, the wrong, the wronger it looks. Like, I guess not the correct sentence, but like, so when you have like super simple stuff, it can look, it'll always look good no matter. When you look at it but if you're trying to chase the realism you'll just be outpaced in a couple years because people will just be able to do more realistic stuff and that's part of you know like when i want to make something i want it to look <clears throat> i don't want it to look good for like two years i want it to look good forever uh and i'm not gonna also making super realistic stuff takes a long time like way too long especially if i'm just working like on a portfolio piece it's not worth it to try and nail that because I don't have, you know, I'm not going to spend a year on something on a single well, like object. What do you think about um, No Man's Sky? 
Yeah, see, I love that's I, again. I like I like <laughs> that style too. Like it's just it's all like flat shaded. There aren't very many textures. There aren't many like null maps or things like that. Uh, but it looks like you just you can look at it and you're like I know what that is. It's a spaceship. It's a tree. You know, you don't need to see like not every leaf probably isn't animated or you know isn't physics based or whatever. Well, I, I I still have to figure out how they did it because I've I've looked at the trailer over and over again and I could I don't think I could be able to replicate this. It's like it's in, the simplicity is so well. I mean, it's so oh, yeah. so seamless. I right, that's that's really something I'm really looking forward to. Yeah, that's one thing everyone has been like, how on earth did you guys pull this off? But I'm sure I'm sure they'll tell us eventually, or we'll just play it and. You know, everyone can yeah. stop making games. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, someone's asking about the Arias. Why is he not on the chat? And um, well, I spoke with Arias this morning. Well, I'm I'm surprised that Gabriel would ask this question because he knows that Arias never does chats. <laughs> like, he's I guess his camp is like uh, chat shy. But we, we were very hopeful that he would join us. I'm very sad that he didn't. I'm going to scold him tomorrow morning. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I told Ori House that, that, that you should come in the chat and, and hang out, but, but I don't know. It, uh, I, I don't know if that got to him or not. But... Well, I think he, he was like... online right now. No, he's not online. I think oh. he's sleeping in New Zealand. He's probably late right now. Yeah, that, I guess the. The thing with what what he's doing, like he's he's using what like Unreal Four right now, so he's yeah. he's getting into the whole um, like the physically based rendering stuff, which is it's I mean it's really cool. It's it's a good way to to simulate actual physical materials, and I think that's like I don't know. It's like the the technology is there now in, in Unreal, so it's like anybody can if they want to start messing with that, do you know like a one month trial and stuff, but. Um, it's it's interesting to watch what he does because he's he's not just going in trying to build you know reality he's he's making his own reality as he does it and so it's it's just a cool way to see like a indie developer using the, the physically based rendering. Yeah, I'm curious to see where he's going to bring that. Have you have you seen the Panic's latest stuff? Like uh, not nowhere? Uh, no, I don't think I have. Well, uh, Panic is yeah. No, no. I was gonna say I think I've heard of it, but then I interrupted you to explain it anyway. So, uh, uh, well, uh, I think uh, you should have a look at, at the stuff. It's uh, his Twitter is a panic with a Q at the end, and his game is called Nowhere. And it's I think he, he built his own engine, his own everything, and it looks like nothing I've ever seen before. Um, he's, he's trying to crowd crowdfund it, I think, but it's really oh, hard. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. They... I've seen this. Yeah. <laughs> In in the beginning, his game was supposed to use a ray marching tech to get it working, but I think he gave that up. I'm not really sure. I mean, I, I look at his feed, and I'm like, every day I'm blown away. I have no idea how he does that, but um, I'm not sure how he. I mean, how he's doing any of that. But it's all super minimalistic, super clean stuff. Uh, his style is like very him. I think I think he's working with his wife, and she also has like a very distinct style, also super clean. Nice. I'm very excited to try this. Yeah, that's that's getting into the crazy world of like shader type stuff like for anybody listening like just go to i think it's shadertoy.com and you can just use webgl and just kind of see all kinds of experiments that people are doing it's a, it's a great way to learn it's a good way of frying your macbook 2012 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay can, can you say that what that link is again i want to put that in the chat uh i think it's shadertoy.com okay all right i'll, I'll find that Yeah. Well, someone is, someone just asked, but um, yeah, there's gonna be a chat. Uh, oh, awkwardly, we actually just posted it. Who just posted it? Yeah, it's just panic with a Q at the end on Twitter. Okay. Oh, Great oh, guy. Oh. That's pretty. Some pretty cool shit. Yeah, that. Do and go. Okay, mm -hmm. and I'll post in the shader toy beta. Wait, who, who else should we do shout outs to? Oh, <laughs> I was, I was gonna. Well, not shout out, but I was going to ask if you guys have you heard of Eskel Steenberg and his work? No, can you put uh, that in the chat? Yeah, uh, I can. Well, I can link to like he. It was a couple years ago, but uh, he made it was a MMO called Love, 
And oh, wait. Like, oh. No, no, no. Castle Heart. Yeah, yeah, of course, man. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. So, yeah, this guy's stuff is is nuts in, like, in, the, in, like, the best way. And that he's written, yeah, yeah. like, his own shader and renderer and modeler, and it's, like, nothing you'll ever use before. And I've been <laughs> meaning to get back into it, so it's to force me to, like, use... Uh, to to make something different because the tool is so strange or not strange but just not traditional I guess. Well, he sure loves iconography. I mean, everything has an icon and it's, yeah. it's a total nightmare. <laughs> but it's beautiful. It's great that he did he did all these tools and it's it seems to be working with his own kind of language and world. I mean, everything kind of fits with love and I mean, it it feels like you're riddling love with love basically yeah. Yeah, when you're using this stuff. But I, I mean, I, I think I used it like a long, long time ago, and at the time, I was I never got anything out of it, uh, or like not that, but I mean, like I never produced anything that was looking at. Uh, well, me, me neither. But I think like for I don't know when you tried it, but it was for, for me. It was like my the first time I I think I saw like Vexel ish stuff. So it, I was pretty mind blown by using his tools where he could just slice stuff and instead of modeling and pushing vertices. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a program called 3D Coat as well that you can do voxel modeling yeah. as well. 3D uh, Coat, uh, I highly recommend for anybody that's thinking about sculpting stuff. I mean, it, it's I think it's cheaper than ZBrush. It's you know, it's do, I, do you use 3D Coat at all with your work or? I no, I haven't. Um, I've used it like briefly to kind of try it out, but I don't. Uh, I don't use it regularly, but yeah, it, it seems definitely like a great, I think it's probably the only voxel sculpting program out there. I'm sure there are more, but it's, yeah, a, it's probably the biggest. I th yeah, I think, I think it is. Um, they, yeah, I highly recommend anybody interested in sculpting, try it because they, they have a good 30, I think it's like a 30 day trial and it's, you know, it's, it's not as polished and, you know, shiny and nice as, as ZBrush or Mudbox. Um, but it, for anybody that's done actual sculpting with their hands, it, it, it just kind of feels a little bit better because you don't have to worry as much about your, um, all the polygon topology, like all that kind of messy stuff. You just, yeah. you just work with, yeah, voxels and it's, I don't know, it feels more real in a way. Um, but it's, it's buggy, you know, and they're still, they're still developing it, but it's, it's pretty cool. And it, I, it's a pretty cheap program too, that if you're getting serious about sculpting, it, it can fit into a, a small budget. Actually, uh, Ezra, there's a bunch of questions on the chat for you. Uh, what's the name of the program and the link for it? And also, uh, um, yeah, I'll, I'll put it in there. Yeah, Sculptress. Also, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, Sculptress. Uh, on, uh, on Shader, oh, yeah. when you, when you write shaders, how easy is it to port it to like Unity? I, I know Arias does it, but I think he's a wizard, so I'm not sure how easy that actually is. <laughs> uh, well, it? I guess when I've the times that I've been writing shaders, I've I've usually just been working within Unity uh, using their Mono Develop text editor that it comes with. Um, it's not I would I don't recommend doing that if you're learning shaders. Like I'd say get um, like something like UDK. Uh, Real Engine 3, anything that has some kind of free node-based shader editing, um, just so that you can see what, what commands and stuff are available and plug them to together that way. Because uh, I, yeah, I don't know, I, it's, I don't really have any, any good advice on how to go about learning shaders the right way. Like I've kind of, I've done it the wrong way, which is just, I just try and find other shaders and take them apart and figure out what each thing does and break it and stuff like that. It's really, it's like a really weird wizard subject type thing. Um, but I guess for Shader Toy is really good, the website, because you can see, like instantly, you can see what the shader is doing and you can also see the code and then you can just play around changing values and kind of feel it out that way. Um, so that's, that's a good way for, for trying things and learning. And yeah, somebody mentioned in the chat Shader Forge for Unity. It's very good. Uh, I think it's, it might be like 99 bucks or something. There's, there's an older one called uh, Strumpy Shader Editor, I think. Yeah. Um, that was a free one.
Yeah, Scul so Sculptress is like a super light uh, version of ZBrush, but everyone in chat seems to already know what it is, so no big <laughs> I deal. I never tried it. Yeah, it's it's okay. It, uh, it it doesn't make clean meshes by any stretch of the imagination, but if you if you need ZBrush like tools for free, uh, you can get some done. You can get stuff done with it, um, and it has painting too, and it probably has. Well, I haven't used ZBrush paint in a while, actually, so I won't say that. So um, I, I've done a little bit of modeling myself, and, and for the most part, it was it, I've actually like I, I've done like I'm, I don't know too much particularly about like what tools are usually good, but I've been to workshops that have that have had people discuss things like Google SketchUp and such like that too that you would usually import into Unity or something. I'm not sure about. Oh know. yeah. Yeah. Um, are, do any of you guys have you used SketchUp at all or? Uh, like yeah, years yeah. and years and years ago. I don't use it now. So. Yeah, me neither. Like I moved uh, to Modo. Oh. Oh, wait, which one is that? Oh, Moto. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, but, I kind of uh, SketchUp has sort of became my my tool of choice for simple three D modeling, um, but it's it has kind of a bad rap because it it can get pretty messy and bad <laughs> with with like the think, geometry think, and stuff. Yeah, it, it creates terrible geometry. That's that's why I don't use SketchUp anymore. I had to like stitch it, stitch everything together, and it was terrible for like uh, if you use a like a mesh mesh dynamic like a uh, mesh colliders, it it doesn't know what's up, what's where. So uh -huh. yeah, there's so there's I guess there's um, there's ways to work around it. Um, I think I mean for anybody that's using SketchUp, the the main piece of advice is to use their components. Just use components like crazy. Um, Basically, if you have a wall and there's going to be some kind of panel that's sitting attached to the wall, make the panel its own component. Because um, oh. any time a surface intersects, it's going to cut that surface when you export and make more triangles. So oh boy. you kind of <laughs> have to use components to like make things not cut each other and do bad stuff to the mesh. But the I guess the main main thing for me is like SketchUp is a really different workflow from common modeling tools, and it just it seemed a lot more like drawing on paper, and um, so it was just you know for some people it might be a little bit easier for them to get around it. Uh, and well, it's free. Yeah. Yeah, that's the kicker. <laughs> <laughs> so you can go from free to very expensive. Oh, man, I, I was given a, a license of uh, Max Cinema 4D like a few years ago, and I've been running on that forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 3D software now are fucking expensive. Yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, like, like, cause, cause I, I know that I know that there's been a lot of uh, th uh what's it called, the uh, 3D graphics programs that are now doing subscriptions now. Which is like a like a weird new thing with it. I think Unity started to do subscriptions instead of like you buy instead of buying it as one copy. Now you you pay like a little bit every month for it, and and I think that was for Unity as well as um as well as Unreal Engine as well. Um. So 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 I mean I mean there, there's this thing about how a lot of tools like it's hard to sort of navigate of which tools are good and also like like how do people do tools on a budget if everything's getting more expensive then, then that's kind of weird right if, if you're someone who wants to get into art but all the tools are getting more and more expensive it's like well what can you do then well so someone's like uh, complaining about subscriptions i'm actually like you know I, i've been paying for subscription instead of like uh, licenses for a while and it's not that bad like i can i mean okay yeah it's more it, it ends up being more expensive but it's it's either you know, thirty bucks a month or something that you can't afford at all. So, yeah, I mean, you either like right now, pay the I'm... subscription or wait like years and years and years before you can buy it outright. Yeah, or, so I don't know. Like right now, I'm paying um, for Photoshop, and I mean, I use it every day. And but it's I remember like the first license I bought when I was in school. It was super expensive. It's not like it's not accessible at all. And I think I don't know if Autodesk still does this, but I think they still give out free like three year licenses for students. But since that's that was before I did, I mean that's basically what I did for a long time uh, oh. when I was a student. Yeah, but I don't know since they've changed the subscription if they still do that or not. But it's probably worth looking into because no, they they still do a student student. I mean, when I got my student license, it was not free, but it was like uh, maybe two hundred dollar or two hundred. 
like I, I think I, I'm wondering if Unity has a student uh, licenses. Do you know? I I don't know, but I don't think so. Um, like I, I'm not using it. I haven't been using Unity for a few years now. But I was like, I remember I was using Unity before it, it was like well because it, before it changed subscription to subscriptions and. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've always felt it was pretty expensive. I mean, like right now, whenever I, I, I really wish that it was like a, the sub, like you could use the subscription for Pro and only use it for a short period of time, even if it's like, because I, I know people would like abuse this and just like get them so when the project is is due or something. Mm -hmm. But I really wish I, I could like have a Pro for one one extra month, one extra month. I would, I mean, I would pay for that. Not, not have to pay a whole year of subscription to have access to Pro. Yeah, I still just run on the free Unity right now because I don't have a need for the Pro yet, but we'll see. Well, I've been I've been I've been using uh, like the the new iOS uh, 3D engine, well, SyncKit for the past uh, well ever since it's, ever since uh, WWDC, and I think this is my new Unity. Uh -huh. It's super, super simple. Really good. Really, I mean, it's so good not to have to use C sharp um, or JavaScript, um, and uh, it makes programming a lot more playful. I find for me. So, um, can, can I, I ask you, if any of you? Well, I just want to yeah. ask like, if there's anything, if if you can possibly explain exactly what's actually wrong with using C sharp, because I'm actually curious of, of what. Well, uh, if you, I, I think if you if you studied in programming. And uh, maybe C sharp make more, more, makes more sense for you. But for me, uh, coming from like Ruby, uh, I find C sharp a lot of useless overhead, and I find it that disgusting looking language. Uh, sure. So, I mean, I mean, it looks kind of it doesn't look natural for for me to look. So, I, I guess I'm more on the on the Lua side. Uh, and now, and now the new like uh, Apple's new language called Swift is, I find it it feels a lot more like Ruby. It feels a lot more. Um, you get more more stuff done <laughs> with less code. Well, see, I jump straight into go go ahead. But I just want to say, like, like, well, the, the, I just want to mention that the thing about C sharp is that it's an object oriented language, which means that you have to put everything into weird structures and stuff. But Lua is not Lua is not object oriented, which means that you can just kind of put whatever you want in. So when you're using something like Love to Do, yeah. you just do that, right? Like, it's not a big deal. And, and yeah, C sharp has so many rules person. and stuff. Yeah, so many rules and everything you have to put in. Yeah, I don't know. I, well, I guess it's probably a preference thing. I mean, as so many people are using C sharp, so that it has to be. I mean, it has to be pretty good. Um, but yeah, like I, I look at the chat now, and some people are thinking that Swift is unreadable. And for me, it's like I couldn't see it. Like coming from like I do a lot of closure, and when I look at Swift, it feels like oh, okay, I know, I know what's what's going on. I know it's easier for me to move on to Swift rather than uh, when I whenever I do whenever I'm doing C sharp, I feel kind of gross. <laughs> do you do any um, custom coding in Moto? Uh, I I look into that, but I, it's not so useful for the things I'm doing. I mean, I could see the use for it, but uh, for for what I'm doing, it's not so useful. I mean, I move, I move everything into engines. So. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, if I was doing animations and rendering directly inside Moto, um, maybe I would use it. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. That's right. Oh no! I think it was my mic acting up. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, for some sometimes when I'm in because uh, I use mostly 3ds Max uh, for uh, work, and I end up working a lot in Max Script in it, uh, which is the worst thing ever. And I would never recommend anyone do it. <laughs> Max Script, yeah, I, I, yeah. I remember Max Script. It's... I think it's well. I think it's. I guess pretty much do all the large 3D engines have some kind of scripting language, like Modo, Max. Uh, does Maya have, like, Maya script? Or... Maya has Mel and now Python. Uh, I think Max has Python too, but I'm not as familiar with it. And I think Maya has had Python for longer. So, yes. Cool. Yeah, because I think Sketch... Actually, SketchUp might use Ruby, um, Alice. Uh, I don't oh. know for sure, but it might use Ruby. Yeah, but all, I mean, like programming inside and like tr inside 3D programs for me, it's kind of like, well, if you want to generate a shitload of polygons and, and intersections, yeah, it, can, it might be fun. Otherwise, if you're gonna use it for animation, yeah, that, yeah. that's fine. 
but like no, I, I think it's I mean I well yeah it's it's cool though I mean it seems like it's just a requirement for 3D tools to have because that way you get a lot of user created add-ons for doing things and shortcuts and stuff like yeah, that yeah. but it's, a lot of it goes over my head it's like <laughs> Fun fact, I think, like, Maxon, uh, well, Cinema 4D uses, uh, its, it's programming language is called CoffeeScript, but it's, I mean, it's a different kind of CoffeeScript. <laughs> well, actually, it's, it's called Espresso, but uh, when you look for it, it has to be, like, CoffeeScript. <laughs> CoffeeScript thing. Um, so, so we're hitting, we're hitting actually 45. So, so we're we're actually um, we're actually and like we're getting pretty close to around to around the end of our time because we only have about an hour. Um, so I want to actually I want to actually go to the people in the chat, and I'm wondering if anyone has, has any particular questions, anything that that they're interested in, anything that that they want to know, particularly about concerning 3D art or any just game art in general, to be honest. Um, any kind of questions or anything that they'd like to know about, and and basically then then we can pretty much go around that. If there's anything particular. Because we're at forty, yeah, we're at forty-six now, and we could probably we could probably close down around fifty-five, so then I can get started for the next panel. But if there's anything anyone in chat has is interested in, or anything particular, like just just totally let us know, and then and, and, and uh, we can go over that. I think people are debating about programming. Yeah. <laughs> I, should, well, I should not have. <laughs> All right, here we uh, go. Uh, best way to structure your workflow of a fast iteration between modeling and in-game assets. You mean like working from an, from a tool into the game? Is that uh, high poly versus the low poly yeah, model? Yeah. So, I mean, it, whatever I guess works best for you. It's it's a dumb way to answer it, but like, I mean, I the, the way I work is I would not be the way you would prefer working, I suppose. Um, but Hello everyone. Are we? I just I literally just uh, redid it. I just restarted the stream. Is uh? Okay. Are we heard? Are we heard now? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Ah. Oh. Hey. Right. Hey. Hey everybody. What's going on? Yeah. So 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 I, I mean I, I I hope everything was audible. We were we were just going over workflows and right now we're going over texturing 3D models, Photoshop and that kind of thing. Uh. Yeah, I was saying, depending, if it's more like a realistic model, uh, I'd start with a name and inclusion bake, uh, just to, because when you have your UV map, I mean, it's basically just nothing. So at least with the AO, if you're going from high poly to low poly, the AO gives you some detail that you can get started with, and then, yeah, just paint it in Photoshop, uh, and then... Well, actually, when I, when I said Photoshop, I meant, like, actually, the last game jam I did with dumb 2 d like, I didn't want to teach, like to go through the process of teaching him how to unwrap or to use you know 3D tools or anything. But he's really good at Photoshop. But what we figured is that we can open an OBG file with Photoshop and paint uh, the UVs directly on the mesh, and that that saved us a lot a lot of time. Oh, see, I've never I've never done that before. So I know nobody nobody tries that because the tools on Photoshop are like super not intuitive. But once you figure it out, it's pretty actually pretty simple. Um, and it's worth looking into. That's cool. Yeah, and and then like Sculptress does three D painting and most most things now will let you do three D painting to a limited degree at least. Yeah, uh, I I really like the the three D painting approach. Um, it's yeah. There is um, there's a like I think it's Alpha of Substance Painter, and it's like a new three D painting program. Um, it's kind of limited right now, but it you know for people interested in three D painting, it, it's worth looking at. Okay, let's let's see if there's anything else particular. Is there any is there any other <laughs> bigger questions? I'm just looking at or Well, a bunch of people are like asking how to do the Photoshop thing. Well, okay. get in touch with me, and I'll like I think I'll just make a video to ex or I, I'll ask Dom to make a video on how to do that. Um, but yeah, it's it's super simple. You just have to figure it out. Okay. Yeah, is how to uh, how to apply textures to your mesh. That depends on what you're doing and what tool you're in. I mean, uh, but usually you have. You, once you make the UVs, you can just apply 
the texture to a material and the material to the object. And if your UVs are correct, they will just appear. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's magic most of the time. Okay. Um, there, there's a question here about about for Alice Effect about about if you're ever gonna use color. No, I don't want to answer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, I mean, I I talk to him every day. I'm gonna okay. Him, <laughs> you can answer that in private then. <laughs> uh, right. Yes, because I don't want to make an announcement and then like, yeah, where well, I'm gonna use colors and then not because I'm mostly not will use I will mostly not likely use colors. Someone in chat is mentioning fuck UVs. I can happily agree with them. That's basically <laughs> why all my mo all my personal work usually just I just use vertex colors. Yeah. Uh, because fuck yeah. UVs take <laughs> the worst. Yeah, but if if you're using Unity, I find that every Unity game has no texture, and I, it kind of drives me crazy when all the Unity games look the same. Um, I, yeah, I mean, it doesn't mean. Oh, go ahead. Well, I, I, I was just I was just wondering if if it was possible, um, because we're we're almost because we're only like a few minutes until closing. But I'm actually wondering if it's possible to explain exactly what what a UV is briefly and what exactly is wrong with it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, if you could do right. it briefly. <laughs> uh, uh. Well, UV is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional polygon. So basically, like when you see, it's just like lines that are flat that map to a 3D space. Uh, and it's, it's like, well, I don't know how to try to explain. It's like it's like like a, a like an atlas or a map of something like that is a UV like a map is a UV sheet of the earth in a dumb way and it's they're horrible because they're really difficult to do and they're time consuming sometimes but i don't think i did really good though well then i could not have said it any better <laughs> Gee, so so i mean if if people if if someone is trying to do 3d art um and they would rather is there a way to go around uvs any way to sort of try to avoid those issues if you just can, can you just not um, use uvs is that possible or like kind of well, yeah. some some tools have auto unwrapping, which you know you might not get the same perfection results, but it'll it'll get you there, uh, depending on what you're making. That's that's that can be an option, auto auto unwrapping. Okay, um, so we're we're actually hey. at oh, oh sorry, you can go. No, I was gonna say it depends on how much control you want over the mesh, but yeah. Okay, so um, that's actually really cool. We're actually at 455 right now, um, and I think I think that was actually really cool. I think actually we're pretty much good to, to close it and try to move on to the next panel. Um, thank you all for watching. Thanks all to all of you, and and of course thank you all three for coming here and, and talking um, and having this really conversation. I'm sure people learned a lot. I hope people learned learned something particular and and had a really really good time. So so thank you all for very much for coming. Um, is there any last oh, thank things? Thank you guys. Yeah, yeah. Is there is there any last thing any of you want to say? Any last particular things before we move on? What's the next panel? Um, the next. I'll stick oh, jeez. Well, well, the next panel. Let me check my schedule here. There, I'm pretty. Oh, the next panel is a playful discussion of games and work. That's be that's gonna be a little chat, little casual, intimate chat with Austin Howe and Seven Barn. They're both video game critics. So, so if you're interested in that particular thing. It might be particularly general, but I'm sure it's going to concern a piece that Byron wrote about about uh, leveling up, um, and the the sort of um, the sort of weird capitalist intuition about leveling up and what that means, um, because and probably work around that. So if you're interested in that, hey, you should come around and check it out. You literally just stick here, and we're going to be back in in a little bit. Um, so yeah, that's really cool. Right. So so thanks to thanks everyone. Thanks for having us. Cool. Yeah. Yep, totally. Thank you. Thanks to all you three. Um, thank you to the people who are watching. If you, you should stick around, um, and then after that panel. Um, that's we're gonna have an hour break where there's nothing there, and then we're gonna come back with interdisciplinary design on a zero budget. So if you want to know how to make a game when you have no money <laughs> at all, then you want to stick around for that. That's gonna be on seven EST and four PSD. Um, so we're gonna be back. Um, you're watching Indie Three, 2014, Day Two. Thank you. We'll be back. Peace. <laughs>